Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics lecture series. In today's video, we're going to take a look at snubber circuit design. So let's get started. So this circuit diagram of snubber circuit was arrived in lecture number 16, that is protection of SCR. So basically a snubber circuit is used for protection purpose. And there we came up with the ideology of why do we need this particular circuit? So that is a very useful video in case you have not watched, please do watch it. But I will give you an overview of what all these components are used for. So an inductor is connected in series to prevent from DI by DT, that is sudden change in current. So we know the property of the inductor that it does not allow sudden change of current according to Lenz law, and that is why it is connected in series. A capacitor is connected in parallel across the SCR for DV by DT protection. So it does not allow sudden change in voltage and that is why we have connected it in parallel. A resistor is connected because once the capacitor has charged it to its full value, it has to discharge somewhere, isn't it? So it will be discharging to the resistor R. We have used a diode because if the current is flowing through this path and flowing through this path and the capacitor charging through this path, then obviously we will be reducing the resistive element the current flowing through the resistor element during charging, isn't it? If suppose there is no diode and the current only flows through this path, there will be I square R losses in the circuit, isn't it? So we don't want unnecessary losses. We want a resistor only during discharge and during charging the current can flow through this path and that is why a diode is used. Now for designing the snubber circuit parameters, what is the requirement? We need to find the value of R, value of C and value of L. That means we need to arrive at a common expression that can be applied for all the numericals that we are going to solve. So at the first place, we will be going with the derivation. So I would suggest you to make a note of this derivation parallelly as I'm doing it. And it will give you an easiest understanding of whatever is being done today. So we will be going with some assumptions initially. So we are assuming that the SCR is in forward blocking mode. That is, it is acting as open circuit at this point in time and we will be starting off with our derivation. So one more consideration is we are going to consider case one. So what is case one all about? Case one is without capacitor, that is without CS connected to the circuit. So you might ask me a question, why do we have to do a case without CS? Because we have CS in the circuit, isn't it? Under transient analysis, the capacitor will be acting as short circuit at certain point in time in the circuit. So that is why we need to start off by assuming there is no capacitor. That is basically it is acting as short circuit. That is what I am meaning by without capacitor CS. Now, under transient analysis, like assuming you know the basics of network analysis, the current flowing is I. So if we consider I is the current flowing through the circuit, the current is flowing through this path, the current is flowing through this path, and the current is flowing through this path. No current is flowing here as it is open circuit. So V is connected in series with RS and L. So when RL is series connected with voltage, the current in the circuit can be given by V by RS into one minus E power minus of RS by L into Parallelly, please make a note of it so that you will understand it in a much better way. So now what we will be doing is we will be differentiating with respect to T. So we will be getting by DT equal to V by RS into 1. 1 is basically a constant so you'll be getting zero over here when you differentiate it minus e power of minus rs by l into t into minus rs by l so we are differentiating it with respect to t in the sense we are retaining this expression and according to chain rule when we differentiate this again minus of rs by l into t so we will be getting into minus rs by l so once this is done what we will be doing is di by dt is equal to, we will further simplify this. So rs and rs will get cancelled and you will be left out with v by l 
into e power minus rs by l into t so basically minus into minus it will be plus so you are getting a positive sign over here so v by l into e power minus of rs by l into t so from this let us assume that at instant t is equal to 0 so obviously we will get the maximum value that is why we are considering t is equal to 0 so what do we get at t is equal to 0 that is di by dt will be equal to v by l into 1 so e power something that is e power 0 will be equal to 1 and 0 multiplied with something is 0 so e power 0 will be equal to 1 and we will be arriving at this expression that is l is equal to v by di by dt rearranging this particular equation so you will be getting the expression of l which is very very important to solve the problems so very very important expression for l we have arrived at now we know the current across the resistor v that is the voltage across resistor is been given by v is equal to i into rs isn't it so when we are differentiating this with respect to t what will happen dv by dt is equal to di by dt into rs isn't it so can we further rewrite this by substituting the value of di by dt that is v by l so what we will be getting we will be getting dv by dt is equal to v by l into rs isn't it I have substituted for the value of di by dt in this particular expression so finally what do we get we will be get rs is equal to l by v into dv by dt another very important expression for solving the numericals so from this what have we arrived at we have arrived at the value of l basically the expression for l and the expression for rs so once this is done we need to still find the expression for c isn't it so we will be considering it in case 2 so case 2 is considering the capacitor that is with c so in this case what we will be doing is when we are considering the capacitance as well so we will be writing the expression of kirchhoff's voltage law that is v is equal to i into rs that is the current flowing through the resistive element rs plus the current through the inductor is given by or the voltage across the inductor is given by l into di by dt plus the voltage across the capacitor is given by 1 by cs into integration of i into dt so this is a very basic formula when r c and l are connected in series or by applying kvl you will be able to arrive at this equation isn't it now when we differentiate this with respect to t what we will be getting is i'll be considering from this point that is l into d square i by dt square plus rs into di by dt plus 1 by cs into i because you are integrating it with respect to t you will be only left out with i isn't it this will be equal to zero because the voltage is constant and when you are differentiating a constant parameter with respect to t obviously it will be equal to zero now what we will be doing is take laplace transform on both the sides so when we do this we will be getting l into s square plus s into rs isn't it so for d square i by dt square you will be getting s square and for di by dt you will be getting s plus for 1 by cs you will be getting cs constant and i will be taking the value of i outside so we will be getting i of s over here into zero that is equal to zero so this can be further simplified in this particular i will be doing is i'll be taking l common throughout this particular expression so you'll be left out with a square plus s into rs by l plus 1 by l into cs into l into i of s so basically 
this expression can be rewritten as this particular expression if you simplify this expression further you will be arriving at the previous expression itself now if you carefully observe this particular expression we will consider this to be equivalent to a second order system isn't it what is that a square plus 2 zeta into omega n into s plus omega n square equal to 0 isn't it so when you are comparing these two expressions we will be able to get certain parameters from this particular expression isn't it so basically i'll be rewriting this in a new window over here so from that particular expression omega n square is equal to 1 by l into cs isn't it so further from the same expression when we are comparing those two 2 zeta into omega n is equal to rs by l isn't it now I will be rewriting this as expression number 1 and this as expression number 2. So from this particular expression I will be squaring this up. So you will be getting 4 zeta square into omega n square is equal to rs square by l square. So when you are squaring equation number 2 you will be arriving at this and from 1 substituting the value of omega n square over here. So what you will be getting? 4 into zeta square into 1 by LCS is equal to RS square by L square. So in this particular equation if you can cancel the value of L that is there in both the sides isn't it. So simplifying this you will be arriving at the value of CS that is 2 zeta by RS whole square into L. So this is another very important expression that is required for solving the problems. So we have found the value of R, S, we have found the value of L, we have found the value of Cs. Now in this, zeta is actually called as damping ratio. Based on a suitable value of damping ratio, optimum performance of the circuit can be achieved. Generally, this zeta value will be ranging from 0.5 to 1. But as a whole, for optimum value of zeta, if they have not mentioned the value of zeta in the problems, you can take it as 0.65. Very, very important point. So please make a note of this. So as a whole, we have three formulas that is for CS, RS and L. From this expression, we can also have another value of RS, isn't it? So RS can be written as 2 zeta into root of L by C. So depending upon the question, you have to use the value of RS, CS and LS formulas or L. Now, what are the final designed values or the design formulas that we have obtained throughout the process? So the first formula is for the resistance. So we found out the value of RS that is given by L by V into dV by dt. Or we have one more formula that is RS is equal to 2 zeta into root of L by C. So you can, the C is basically C or CS depending upon the value that you take, you can represent it. And the value of L is being given by V into V divided by DI by DT. And the value of C was found out as, that is basically CS is 2 zeta whole divided by RS whole square into L. These are the three most important formulas that are required for solving any amount of numericals. And these are the designed values for RS, L and CS for the circuit that is under consideration for SER. I hope this video gave you a clear understanding on arriving at these expressions for the snubber circuit. And if you have any questions with respect to this, please do let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Please do keep supporting. Thank you.